Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today we are on episode number 96. As always I am Shane Thomas. You can follow me on Twitter at SMTHOMAS3 SMThomas3. Also go to CodeKarate.com, sign up for the newsletter on the left and find me on Google+. Today we're going over another spam detection slash prevention type module and it's Malum. Malum does integrate with a third-party service on Malum.com, so you'll have to download or, excuse me, sign up for an account there so you can get your private and public keys. And we'll go through that here in a second. But what Malum basically allows you to do is it analyzes the text of the post based on other submissions it has received from other websites, and it's able to intelligently determine if it's spam or if it's not spam and I've used it on quite a few sites and it does work pretty well it catches generally what I would consider to be 95 to 98 percent of all the spam that comes through the sites that I've I've dropped it in on you know potentially more depending on the site of course so we're gonna go ahead and get started and just test it out and see how we can get this installed and working so the first step is to come into your development site or whatever site whatever Drupal site you're working on and I've already downloaded the module so you'll need to download it and then turn it on. As Soon as you turn it on you can see that it says the Malum APIs are not yet configured so we're going to visit the Malum settings page and it asks for a public and our private key. So I'm going to hop over to Malum.com and I could click on get started and there is a free version of Malum as well as a couple different paid versions but if I wanted the free I could fill out the form, sign up for an account. I already have an account, so I'll go ahead and just log in. If I can remember my password. I guess it needs my username, not my email address. There we go. And you'll go in, into your site manager. If you sign up for the first time, I believe it brings you here by default, so you don't have to click here. But, of course, I have a site in here. I'll go ahead and delete this so I can redo it. So I have no sites in here right now, so I'm going to add a new site. You select that I'm going to use a Malum free. Enter the URL. The site doesn't have to be live yet for this to start working, which is nice. So you can get it set up on a development site before it actually goes live. And it does let you manage multiple sites from one account, so that's nice, especially if you're building mini Drupal sites. You can just select that it's a customer site, so it's being maintained for a customer. So I'll go ahead and I'll click Next after I check that I've agreed to the terms of service, and I'll click Complete Subscription. Now you can see I have my site listed here. You can view statistics eventually about all the spam that's coming through and getting caught, but I'm going to go ahead and click View Keys and I will copy these keys into our Drupal 7 site. And now there's a couple other options that we'll look through as soon as I save this. So now it says the Malum servers have verified the keys, everything's good to go. Now you can select what do you want to do if Malum is down or unreachable. You can either block every form submission that comes in or you can accept all the different form submissions that might come in. And this is definitely a per personal preference thing. I've never really noticed Malum to be down much using the free version. I'm sure it happens occasionally, but I've never noticed it. You can also you also either need to link to the Malum's privacy policy on any form protected by Malum or you'll need to mention it in the terms of service. You can uncheck this but then just make sure it's in the terms of service on the site. I'm also going to enable testing mode so we can actually take a look at this. So I'll save this. It's going to take a couple seconds. As soon as this is done loading or excuse me, saving, we're going to go ahead and hop over and add the various forms. You basically have to, doesn't look like it wants to allow test mode to work. Okay, we're going to drop the keys back in here. 
we'll go we'll try it without test mode then I'll have to follow up and figure out why that's not working but for now we'll just get the actual module itself working without test mode Then as soon as this is done, we're going to hop over to this forms page and we're going to take a look at adding all the various forms. We're just going to go over adding a comment form so we can have an adequate test. So I'll go ahead and add a form and you can select the form from the listing. So it could be user registration, user profile. I'm going to go ahead and say the article comment form is the first one I'm going to add. And you can select how you want what type of protection mode. So you can do text analysis for spam or profanity. You select which fields to analyze. And the text analysis. I'm going to go ahead and do strict so I make sure I can trigger it. And if it's unsure of the text analysis, then it's going to show a CAPTCHA. Basically that means if it's not very confident that it is spam, then it's going to give the user a CAPTCHA to complete. Otherwise you can have it you retain the post and you can manually moderate it or you can just accept it and what do you want to do when it identifies spam I'm gonna go ahead and let it discard it and you can allow content to be moderated from the hosted Malum moderation system which would allow you to moderate from multiple sites but I'm not gonna worry about that right now so I'll save this I'm also going to add a form for the user registration form and we'll just keep this as a CAPTCHA just so you can take a look at that. There's also blacklists so you can block based on IP addresses and specific profanity for, for profanity or spam so you can block an IP address for either or or both and you can select based on fields, links, author name, email address, all those different things so you can really control what gets automatically blocked based on some of those different rules and then here of course will be the statistics that will load in obviously there's not much there now but eventually as you start collecting spam it will show up okay so we're gonna go ahead and try this out. I'm going to log out here and create a new account. As you can see, now there's the CAPTCHA that we turned on for the registration form. I'm going to go ahead and add or finish the CAPTCHA. Click create new account. Assuming I got the CAPTCHA right, then it's going to go through. You can also verify using audio and that will of course actually audio, using audio will actually tell you the characters that you can fill out. As soon as this goes through we're gonna hop into an article and try to submit some spammy content that will hopefully get caught by Malum. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this welcome email. Well actually I'll just log in with a different account that I know works. As you can see that CAPTCHA did its job if I would have entered an incorrect character, of course, it would have given me an error message saying the CAPTCHA is incorrect. But what I really want to do is I want to get something to register as spam. So I'm going to paste in some text that is definitely going to, or should definitely, register as spam based on Malum collecting the, or correctly assuming this was spam in past sites that I've worked on. So I'll go ahead and leave the text format the same. It says this is the Malum privacy policy that you accept. Click the save button and then here you can see your submission has triggered the spam filter and will not be accepted. So it doesn't let it go through at all. Try it again of course it triggers it. If I try a really short comment, 
it will of course go through because it doesn't trigger a spam. If Malum was unsure, it would then basically do the same thing it did the first time, but it would give me a captcha to fill out just to a, just to check to make sure I'm not a bot, I'm a real person. So there is that as well. So we're going to go ahead and come back in here and we'll take a look in our logs because this will show up in the logs, I believe. We want to go to recent log messages. And you can see right here, Malum caught two instances of spam with this spam content or comment that I submitted before. You can also see what tells you when a correct CAPTCHA has been entered. It also lets you know that it did register my test as ham. So it basically it gives you some different options for configuring how how strict you want to be, what kind of content moderation you want, and it basically works for you so you don't have to manually check every entry that comes in to your website. If you get a fairly popular website you'll notice that spam really starts to increase and having something like Malum can definitely help at least eliminate a good chunk of the spam that's getting through the through to your Drupal website. So that's it for this time on the Daily Dose of Drupal and we'll be back again next time with another episode. Thanks for watching. See ya.